actually have uh, uh, Paul Cooney with us from Kirk Lee's uh, uh, action against the cuts. And I, I do think it would be useful if we uh, get to hear about what's happening in other areas. So with your permission, I'll ask Paul if he would speak at the moment, yep. briefly. Right, thank you very much. Can you all hear me fine? Yeah. 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 Strange accent I've got from <laughs> somewhere up north. <laughs> Not the Midlands that you've got here. Um, I'm Paul Cooney. <laughs> I'm the uh, Unison Health Branch Secretary for Huddersfield. Again, over another little border from here. Um, thanks, Alice. I'd like to echo what she was saying about what's happening in the NHS. And I've got a lot that I can speak to you about about the NHS. But I'm not going to talk about that just now. But I'd be more than happy at some point in the future, once the organisation is building, <coughs> to come up and talk about that, not great length, but certainly in terms of the very, very dangerous period that we are facing in the NHS. Basically within four years there may not be an NHS left. Just to give one brief example of that before I go on about Kirk Lee's SOS, and that is that <coughs> in one week's time, on Wednesday the 15th, the Huddersfield-based Primary Care Trust, NHS Kirk Lee's, is going to make a decision which despite our campaigns, I'm fairly upset at the fact I think we're going to lose it, they're going to make a decision as a primary care trust board that 1,300 frontline clinical staff who are based in the community, like speech and language therapists, like district nurses, school nurses, health visitors, community therapists, community dental teams, are going to be privatised from the 1st of yeah. April next year. They will no longer be involved in the NHS. They'll have an NHS brand, a logo on their uniform, but they will not be part of the NHS. They will be privatised. Now that's just the start of a really dangerous route. Now I'm going to talk about Kirk Lee Save Our Services. And what I'd like to say, firstly, is that we just had our first annual general meeting last week. One year on from its founding. And let me say... Despite its successes, when we first met one year ago, there wasn't half the number of people that you've got here in this room tonight. Because I've looked around and I think you're approaching 70 people in here. And you should be damn proud of that, especially in these conditions. Because when we had our first meeting, the weather was a bit more temperate than this is. So congratulate yourselves right away for that. What I would suggest in terms of our experience and how it lends itself to you guys is that you must start off with the aim of being as broad-based as possible. Somebody mentioned earlier on a political purity. Now, we do have representatives from the Green Party in the Huddersfield. We've got representatives from Labour. Um, nobody from the Lib Dems. Nobody from the Tories. But there's quite a lot of people like me, who, despite me being a unison affiliated branch secretary, I'm an unaligned person. I'm not involved in any political party although I have been in the past. And it's vitally important as a foundation that it is as broadly based <coughs> as possible with party uh, political <coughs> people under their experience, with specifically, and I really stress this, with union branch representation as well, from union officers in the area who know what attacks are being faced by their, their members in the current climate and can help with the basic organisation and outreach networks that they have but also broad-based in terms of, I think that was Alice that mentioned, pensioners groups, community groups, women's centres and so on. It is absolutely vital. It's only been one year, but in our AGM last week we had about 30 people at the AGM. Not because that's a lack of, you know, involvement from people outside. There's a bigger, bigger base out there. But it came to the AGM because it was a bureaucratic uh, setup. It was about re-electing the executive committee, re-electing officers but also getting into some planning on demonstrations and lobbies. Now, what you've got to do is just not listen to people speak all the time. And I'll meet this with people of lovely speeches that go on about what they're doing and what I've achieved and so on. It's about practical aspects. Since we were formed a year ago, we've helped, not led, but helped organise all the other groupings that are already in existence in the community to lobby to demonstrate, to run rallies, to lobby the council, to lobby the NHS, and using all the networks at our disposal, 
get out the information about all these events to as wide an audience as we possibly can. You could do it through electronic means, you could do it through face-to-face -face contact. I've got here, I'm not saying you should do this, but a model constitution which we've used as part of the bureaucratic hurdles you may have to go across. <laughs> and I can send you copies of that electronically. I've also got a model resolution that trade union branches can pass in terms of support. You've also got to think about the possibility of funding sources, and trade union branches, again, are a very good means of starting that off. We have within Kirkby's SOS, we call it Save Our Services, we have unison representation from health, local government, National Union of Teachers, UCU, CWU, FPU, and PCS. And that's a pretty good start, basically encompassing most of the public sector. Excuse me, I'm drying up a little bit here. But it is vital, as I said, that you spread this as widely, as far as possible. Faith groups, another good avenue of exploration. Bring people together, because together people can make an impact. And we have all got one thing in common. Not only are we prepared to stand up and fight the cuts, we are, in the main, people who receive the services from those organisations that are being targeted by this <laughs> government. Now, we've actually got a lobby of Kirk Police Council this Wednesday evening at 5 o'clock. And one of the reasons we came together in the first place a year ago was that Kirk Police Council, despite it being a Labour-led council, were already preparing the way and planning major cuts. We knew also that the local NHS was doing so. But now, of course, since the general election, we've got a far greater attack on the services. Not so much in scale, I would suggest, but certainly far more in terms of pace. What I'm particularly frightened of in this government's attacks is that they seem to be, excuse me for saying so, extremely courageous. Thatcher never once took on health, never once thought about privatising clinical frontline delivery. She said the British people would never stand for it. There would be a revolution. This government, in the space of six, seven months, is attacking health at its very roots at the same time as it's attacking education, <coughs> at the same time as trying to implement major cuts across every aspect of the public sector and the welfare state. I, for one, am frightened. And it's all the more important then that we have the solidarity of such a wide base of people and groups and organisations as you seem to have been able to successfully bring about here. So I wish you all the very best. I'm more than happy to come and speak again at some other point. I'll be happy as an organisation for us to exchange views, progress and maintain links between us because we're not talking about miles away. We're just across a county line, basically. <coughs> so I wish you all the best and fraternal greetings and solidarity from us. <laughs>